11 things I wish I knew before running the Honolulu Marathon. If you're new here, hi, I'm Miriam. I make Kauai videos to take the guesswork out of planning your trip. And I ran in the Honolulu Marathon, which is 26.2 miles. It was my first ever marathon. In April of 2023, I ran in the Hapalua Half Marathon to get me prepared for it. The half marathon is about 13 or so miles. And then the full marathon is again, 26.2 miles. If you're looking to run in the Honolulu Marathon for the first time, or if it's your first marathon overall, then this video is for you. Let's get into it. Don't forget to check out yestohawaii.com for places to eat, where to stay, and more things to do, plus itinerary ideas as well. Number one, and the most important lesson I learned for the entire race is to always hydrate and fuel more than you think you'll need. Now, the main reason for that is Hawaii is, of course, very, very humid, and I knew that I live here in Honolulu. However, I underestimated the amount of electrolytes and fuel I would need for the entire race. Race. For the half marathon, I only drank plain water throughout the entire race. Now they did serve a lemon lime Gatorade throughout the race. Um, I didn't like it. It wasn't my favorite flavor. It gave me a bit of a stomach ache. So I just drank the plain water that was served throughout the entire race course. I also didn't eat any of the energy chews or goo or any sort of fuel. If you haven't run a half marathon or any longer race before, I'll show you what that looks like. So these are energy gels. They have different brands. So they're called goo. And I'm sure they have other brands as well, but this is the one that I used. They also have some fruit flavors. So this one is a raspberry lemonade. And then for energy juice, there's different variations. So some of them have caffeine, some don't. So this is an example. And they also have these kind too. So this is the Cliff Bar brand. So if you're familiar with Cliff Bars, they have this as well. I also brought electrolyte packet. So this is what I used. I'll leave links for all this in the description box below. These are single serving packets, pink lemonade flavor. They've got electrolytes in them and I would definitely recommend it. For the half marathon, I was so incredibly dehydrated after the race. I could barely walk. I had sore muscles, sore joints for almost a month. And I seriously doubted if I could even run the full marathon. However, I decided to keep going anyway. And I was out on a long training run with some friends and we were getting close to that 13 mile mark. Now, this is really important because we hit around 15 miles and I didn't have any of the same joint pain or issues that I had from the half marathon. So that inspired me that I could indeed possibly complete the full marathon. So for the full marathon, I brought all the things that I showed you. I brought all these goos, energy chews. I brought these electrolyte packets and I definitely brought way more than I thought I needed. And I'm glad I did. I brought about eight packets of the electrolytes. I used all of them. I brought goos, which are these little energy gels. They have different flavors. Some have caffeine and some don't. There we go. I got different flavors. I did test a few flavors before the race itself just to kind of see how it worked with my body and I absolutely love them. I ate one about every 45 minutes and I had it kind of on clockwork. So about every 45 minutes, I would eat a packet as well as drink some electrolytes. I drank the pink lemonade electrolytes throughout the entire race, of course, had some water, but having the pink lemonade electrolytes was an absolute game changer. I wish I would have brought these for my half marathon. It would have definitely changed the game for me. If you don't like the lemon lime Gatorade flavor, or or just prefer to have your own. Again, I'll leave links in the description box below. I definitely recommend these. These are the ones that I use. And um, again, single serving, super affordable. You just rip it off, pour it into the water cup, swish it around for a little bit, and then you can drink it with the electrolytes. Now for all these other items like the goos and the energy chews, you didn't have to pre-purchase them. I thought I'd have to stop at a running store. I wasn't sure what the expo would have, but the expo before the race has everything. There's so many different products and items for the race that if you didn't pack it or didn't want to pack it in your suitcase to come to Honolulu, you don't actually need to. You can purchase everything there. The second thing I learned is to bring your own water bottle. I bought a water bottle that I brought with me and I bought it at the expo and it was a complete 
game changer. And let me tell you why. So for the half marathon, when I was getting a little bit thirsty and I wasn't sure where the next water station was, and oftentimes you'd get to the water stations and they'd be very, very crowded. It'd be really tricky to grab some water without having to wait for a little bit. It just, it was really chaotic. I remember that. And I definitely wish I would have brought my own water bottle. I did see a few people bring some, but I, it was my first race. I, I had never done a half marathon before, so I didn't know what I should or shouldn't bring. And I figured it'd be better to just pack light. However, for the full marathon, I did not. The full marathon, I brought my own water bottle. This is the one that I purchased. It is the Amphipod brand. It's a 16 ounce and I actually purchased this at the expo. It's super cool because it's ergonomic. It fits on your hand just like this. So it's easy to run with. What I liked about this one, and they have different variations of course, but I like this one one, it's pink. So that's really nice. There's these little spaces here. And I learned that what you're supposed to do with those was you can put your fuel inside of these little packet, kind of like that. So you can stash three of them here. I might also like this one because it has a small zipper pocket. So you can stash your chapstick, lip balm, whatever you wanted to use. There's also a small key ring here. So if you have any keys that you want to put, this was really good because I was able to fit a lot of the goos inside of this. Same thing for the chews that fits inside really, really well. What I also really liked about this is that this is just like a simple plastic water bottle, but as you can see, it's flattened, so it's ergonomic. So when you squeeze the water, it's a lot easier to drink when you're on the go, whether you're walking or running throughout the race. This cap is also really easy as well. Fits just like this. So I had this with me almost the entire race, but I was so grateful that I had this. It was almost like a little security blanket. I didn't have to slow down in certain parts of the race because I was worried about if I would get to the next water station. And again, the race, is huge. There were so many people. It gets really chaotic around the water stations and just having this as a little security blanket was perfect. I'm so glad that I brought this. I actually got the idea to get one of these from a friend of mine who often did her long runs with this, but I had never carried a water bottle whenever I ran like this before, especially for a race that was this long, but I would definitely recommend it. It does get kind of heavier though. It is a 16 ounce water bottle. So what I did, I just filled it to about halfway, about eight ounces, and then it was easy to just pop this off and then pour the electrolyte powder inside and then because it has this lid, you can just go like this, shake it up super easy, and then you can drink it throughout your entire race. I would definitely, definitely, definitely recommend this. I did see other people have like a camel back style backpack and that had like the hydration bladders as well with the longer straws. I personally didn't really like those because I didn't want to run with that on my back. I just preferred it, it just to be lighter for me. So for me, this handheld water bottle was perfect. And even after the marathon, I still use this now on any of my runs just because it's so easy. It's so convenient. Again, you can fill it up to eight ounces. They do, I believe, make a 12 ounce as well. I'll leave a link in the description box below. This one I got on the second day of the expo and a lot of the stuff was already sold out. So if you do want to purchase this or anything similar to in the expo, I would definitely recommend going on the first expo day, not the second expo day like I did. The third thing that I learned is to bring a backup pair of wired headphones. For the half marathon, I had my AirPods and they lasted for the entire race. However, for the full marathon, my AirPods died about halfway through. I thought they would last at least four or five hours, but they did not. They died, I would say around the two, two and a half hour mark, which was unfortunate. I had been using the Nike Run app and the Nike Run app used two your race and throughout the race uh, for example i chose the marathon and it has a coach that is on the audio telling you when you've hit different mileage points as well as giving you encouragement and you can also sync it to your music however because my airpods died i did not have that option if you are going to bring airpods i would definitely recommend to bring the charging case and pack that along with you or a better option and this is what i wish i would have done i wish i would have brought a set of wired headphones that i could have just plugged into my phone just in case my airpods or any battery or excuse me any bluetooth headphones died so Similarly, it's a very long race. That's 26.2 miles. It's your first race. You want to take lots of photos, maybe some video as you're going along the race, and it's a fun race for you. I would also recommend bringing a small battery pack for your phone. I had to limit a little bit on what photos and videos I could take throughout the race because I was using my phone for the Nike Run app to see how far along the course that I was. So I wasn't able to, or I, I could have taken some more photos and videos, but I was really worried about draining my battery. If you want to take more photos and video, just pack the extra little battery pack. They have small ones that you can have and pack them in your pocket. Or like I said, some people did have the fanny packs or the belt bags, or they had like a small little backpack that they were carrying throughout the race. That's something that makes it super easy that you can pack a small battery pack for your cell phone in. The fourth thing I learned is to go to all of the events early. Now, this may seem obvious, but I definitely underestimated the number of people and the crowds that would be at all the events. The first event is the welcome night on Friday night 
The second event is the Expo. The third event is Finisher Monday. So I'll kind of go over a little bit of each of these. The first event, which is the welcome event, was on a Friday. I unfortunately missed it and I wish I would have gone. It's held in the evening and it's more of a welcoming party for those who are running their race. They have a torch lighting and it's a small event, but I missed it and I definitely wish I would have gone. The second event is the Expo. This is where you'll pick up your race packet and it's held over three days, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. And again, the race is on Sunday. I went on a Friday and I learned I definitely definitely wish I would have gone on Thursday, the very first day of the expo. The main reason for this is not the crowds, but a lot of the merchandise. I decided to go on Friday afternoon. And by then a lot of the merchandise had already been sold out from Thursday. So if you're looking to go to the expo, not only to pick up merchandise, but any supplies such as, for example, these like water bottles, I would definitely recommend going the very first day, which is on Thursday. The last event is Finisher Monday. And that happens, of course, the Monday after the race. It's from 9 a.m. to 4 at the convention center. And for this, I would definitely recommend if this is your first marathon to designate half a day for this. I thought I was going to just pick up my completion certificate, which would have taken about, I would say 20 to 30 minutes. And that's the time that I allotted. But once I got there, I realized there were so many different places and signage that you could go and take photos, but there were so many people and the lines were so long that I definitely didn't have the time for it. There were a few finisher photos that I wish I would have had more time, I would have definitely gone back and taken those photos. Same thing for the finisher merchandise. A lot of the Honolulu Marathon finisher merchandise kiosks, the lines were so long that I didn't get a chance to pick up some of the merchandise that I wish I would have had more time for. I also was able to get my certificate laminated at the event itself. So they charged $20 and I wish I would have brought my bib, the racing bib. I saw some people take their certificate and put their certificate on the front and the bib on the back. I probably wouldn't have done it that way because I would want to hang it up on my wall. But if it's it's your first marathon and you want to keep that racing bib, I would definitely recommend to bring that with you to the event. It would have cost me $40, 20 to laminate my certificate and 20 for the bib, which I definitely would have done. However, I didn't bring my racing bib, so I just laminated my certificate. The fifth thing I learned is that the last few miles are the absolute hardest, but it is possible. So right around the 22nd mile, I was absolutely exhausted. But what's really cool and something that I didn't expect is that there are so so many people throughout the entire race course, not just the beginning or the middle, but throughout the entire course. And they are cheering you on. These are volunteers, people who are handing up the water, but also people who are just there to watch the race. And um, they have a loved one in the race or just as a spectator, they have signage saying you can do it. People are cheering you on that don't even know you. And I definitely want to say thank you to everybody that came out to the Honolulu Marathon and was cheering all the runners and the walkers on. There were some times that I was pretty exhausted and I was debating on quitting altogether, but just having that encouragement along the entire race course from start to finish was so helpful. So just remember, even if you have to slow down or go from running to jogging or jogging to walking, it's completely fine. I looked at the Honolulu Marathon as a completion race. It's something that was on my bucket list that I'd signed up for before, but never actually run. So this time that was my only goal. I didn't have a specific time goal. I had a few ideas of the time that I wanted, but my main goal above all was to complete the race, whether it's running, jogging, or walking. And what's great about the Honolulu Marathon as well is that there is no time limit. So you can actually run the race, jog the race, walk the race, or any combination of the above. The sixth thing I learned is that the Honolulu Marathon is actually the perfect first marathon for a lot of reasons. As I mentioned, there's no time limit. So you can run, jog, or walk it. There's also people that you'll see of all ages. You'll see kids, you'll see adults, you'll see senior citizens, all at different levels and physical abilities. It was really inspiring because everybody's in it to complete the race. And it's so cool. I actually, about midway through the race, I was able to catch a glimpse of the winner of the race. And this person, he was running so fast. It was like he was floating on the pavement. It was pretty cool and very inspiring. I did love the camaraderie of the race. Everybody's out to celebrate the race. Everybody's out to encourage each other. Again, there's no time limit. And some people go just to walk the entire marathon. So if you're concerned about time or anything like that, don't be, there isn't a time limit for the race. So if this is your first marathon, this might be the race for you. It's also very warm this time of year in December. So I, again, I wore a tank top and a skirt, the running shoes, very, very comfortable. You don't need to wear leggings or jackets or anything like that. It's very, very cool, but very warm as well. The seventh thing I learned is if you're running in a group, decide how that's going to play out before the actual race. So if you're starting the race together, decide if you're going to run your own race separately, regardless of time, or if you're planning on sticking together throughout the entire race, this can avoid 
a lot of frustration or disappointment if you decided kind of mid-race you're gonna run it together and some people are slowing down for other people in the group and then at the end everybody kind of splits off and does their own thing it can lead to a little bit of disappointment and frustration so to avoid all that decide ahead of time are you gonna run together the entire race time is irrelevant are you going to start the race together and then meet everybody at the finish line for some people running in a group gives them energy for others running is a completely solo sport it's all mental so these are things that you want to kind of decide on before the actual race so if you've trained together but you're more of a solo runner you want to have your airpods in and not talk to anybody that's something to decide on or if you want to run as a group and you're planning on you know chit chatting because it's more of a completion fun race all these things are good to decide ahead of time i personally think the best way to go about it is to train together and then for the actual race start the race together and then just decide you'll see each other at the finish line then there's no potential frustration or disappointment if one person is waiting for somebody and expecting them to wait for them later on in the race it just makes it way more fun however do bear in mind it is about a five hour six hour seven hour race so if time isn't one of your priorities and you don't want to be running the race the entire time essentially by yourself it might not be a bad idea to have all these questions kind of talked about with whoever you're running with before the race itself the eighth thing i learned is to start at your actual time now the bibs that you get are all color coded based on your expected finish time and i ended up starting a little bit farther back because i wanted to start with the group that i was with however i completely regret that and the reason for that is with the race times a lot of people i think underestimate how crowded it can get so because i was farther back than my normal race time or my pace time when i was running throughout the first part of the race i was weaving through a lot of walkers as well as those who were just jogging very very slowly i wish i would have started farther up at my actual estimated finish time the bib color that i had i think that would have saved me a lot of energy just because weaving in and out of people slowing down just all of that i think expended way more energy than necessary and it was like that for probably the first i want to say three or four miles which i did not expect i thought that might be for the first half mile or so but because of the amount of people that are in this race that is a very real possibility so i would definitely recommend and i wish i would have started at my actual bib color or race color the ninth thing i learned is there's actually two races going on at the same time the honolulu marathon is the first race and the second race is the 10k start to park i didn't realize that everybody starts at the same place so often throughout the entire race i would see people just zooming past and i would get a little bit discouraged because i'm like how are you running this quickly and we have 26 miles to go but then i realized after a couple miles that it's actually the same race start and the finish is just sooner so it stops at capulani park so some people are running a 10k race whereas others are running the full 26.2 marathon race the 10th thing i learned is to be careful around the water stations and the reason for this is you're going to be running for 26 or so miles and at the water stations if you're not careful it's very easy to have the water get all over your shoes which gets your shoes and your socks wet which could potentially cause blisters so i was very very careful throughout the race but i definitely saw quite a a few people when they're grabbing the water the water spills on them or it's just very messy and their shoes got wet which would make their socks wet which could potentially again cause blisters throughout the entire race and the 11th thing that i learned is the full marathon was fun but i never want to do that again throughout the entire race it's definitely a bucket list item for sure to complete a marathon but i think for me 10k races or half marathons are more my speed for both of those when i hit those mile markers it was way more comfortable if you're looking for more of a fun race which I was looking for more of a fun race I think I'm going to stick with more of the shorter races like the 5k the 10k the half marathon the marathon it's exhausting it's definitely something that I'm really glad that I did however I don't think I would ever do it again I hope this video sharing the 11 things that I learned for the Honolulu Marathon helps you in deciding what you want to do for your first marathon. If this is your first time to the islands, you can definitely check out the playlist for a guide showing you different parts of the island for Oahu, as well as our neighbor islands if you're planning on island hopping. On to the next one, guys. On this one-page planner, you have everything that you need where you can jot down your details for your hotel, rental car, tours and activities, things that you want to do, and a general itinerary. You can also head to yestohawaii.com for even more more Hawaii content, places to eat, where to stay, and things to do. And if you'd like some done for you itineraries, check out the links in the description box below for some itineraries I've made just for you guys.